uh, We've been rocking since the sandbox, man Stop playing with my dog, Scooper Steve He the man, got plans, bro, to give him what you need Hot damn, from the court to the field, they elite I'm saying, why, yes, got the hot takes in loose state checking Talking about all the highlights from alleys to interceptions From tutties to dope perceptions and fantasy weak projections And honestly, think you gotta tune in to get the message Let's go We're back to finish up the top 10 of Steve's top 25 best plays in the NFL. I know it's been a little bit delayed, but if you guys haven't got caught up to the list yet, you guys had plenty of time. Here to start off the list at 10, we need to show some love for the last offensive lineman on the list. This is where we have Trent Williams. We all know Trent's scenario. He was a building block and a foundational piece for Washington, and now he's that with the 49ers and an absolutely essential part to that offense, right? The quarterback committee that they had for the 49ers wouldn't be able to be as successful without somebody like Trent Williams. Talk about, you know, the impact for Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel, whether that's rushing the ball or receiving the ball. Trent Williams, along with the other four offensive linemen for the 49ers, absolutely vital to that. Have to show some love here to the best offensive lineman in football. Yeah, I'm saying that about Trent Williams, not Lane Johnson, Twan. At nine, this is where we have Devontae Adams coming off of a great year. I think he had a little bit of a slow start weeks one and two, but obviously that's getting accustomed to a new role, a new team, and things of that nature. So a lot of growing pains. Was really difficult to see that Kyle was only on a one-year leash to make a move like that, especially when, you know, Jimmy G is somebody that has Super Bowl experience, but you wouldn't always call him the most reliable quarterback with his injury history and just sometimes inconsistent play. But Devontae Adams had 100 receptions on the dot, just over 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns. He had 65 first downs in a crazy amount of targets. 180 targets is a big number. This is three straight seasons for Devontae Adams having over 100 catches and over 1,300 yards. The past three years, Devontae Adams had 43 touchdowns. Let's not take this dude for granted. One of the best receivers in the NFL. Devontae Adams here at 9. At 8, we just talked about Trent Williams. Well, now we're going to talk about his teammate, his newly acquired teammate. This is where we have Christian McCaffrey of the 49ers. A midseason trade going from Carolina to San Francisco. But, you know, Christian McCaffrey absolutely killed it this year. Not only did he prove the haters wrong with being able to stay available and healthy for an entire season... This dude killed it. He had just under 250 rushes. He had 1,139 rushing yards, 8 touchdowns, 59 first downs. This is just on the ground. When we talk about the passing game and his receptions, he had 85 receptions, just under 1,000 yards. He had 741 reception yards and 5 receiving touchdowns. And through the last 9 games of the season, he had a touchdown in every single game. Christian McCaffrey and his skill set is definitely taken for granted in today's NFL. I'm truly shocked to see the running back market not develop the way it should. Guys like Christian McCaffrey, guys like Saquon Barkley, they shouldn't have to beg to be paid. Pay that man. At 7, this is where I have a Bosa brother. Not Joey Bosa, he wasn't available to play. My third 49er inside my 10-6 to range. This is where I have Nick Bosa, my defensive player of the year, the prediction I made back in August. In the NFL sack leader, this dude had 51 total tackles, 18 and a half sacks, 19 tackles for loss, one pass deflection, two forced fumbles. Oh, and did I say defensive player of the year? Absolutely incredible year from Nick Bosa, and can't wait to see you know where that continues. This dude this season at a, at a 17 games had five games with over one sack, five games with two plus sacks. Absolutely incredible. Nick Bosa is a name that if you don't know, now you know. Nick Bosa here at 7. At 6, just outside of the top 5, midway through the year, this dude was my offensive player of the year. And then Justin Jefferson absolutely just tore it up the second half of the season. But at 6, this is where I have Cheetah, Tyreek Hill, newly acquired wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. This dude had 120 receptions, 1,700 receiving yards, 7 touchdowns, 482 yards after the catch. Like, let, let's show some respect to that. These are all crazy numbers. 
one of the only dudes in the NFL that could take a slam pass and make it an absolute bizarre play, go for 70-plus. He had 77 first downs, so we're talking about just 50 of his receptions not being first down. So, crazy number. He nearly had 1,100 receiving yards on the road. So, we're talking about, you know, a player that made sure he produced when he wasn't, you know, just playing in Miami. This dude, day in, day out, whether it was a Sunday, Monday, Thursday, was always performing. He had six of his seven touchdowns on the road. So, I don't know what it is with Miami Stadium. Maybe that's just where Jalen Waddle gets a lot of the love, but... Tyreek Hill, absolute monster on the road. He had five games this year with over 140 receiving yards. Let's not disrespect that. Tyreek Hill is that dude, the second best wide receiver in the NFL. F5, I'm showing some love for the defense. This is my only defensive player inside the top five. A lot of you guys are going to think I'm crazy. F5, this is where I have the defensive rookie of the year. Sauce Gardner. So I got a lot of respect for this dude being able to come in year one and have the impact that he did. We're talking about defensive rookie of the year. A successful recruitment of Aaron Rodgers and Alan Lazard. He had a pro football focus grade of a 90. 75 total tackles, three tackles for loss, two interceptions. And let's put some respect on 20 pass deflections. That's a crazy number. You know, he's following the number one wide receiver all around the field, whether that's the slot the outside, on either position. Show some love, show some respect for Sauce Gardner here at 5. My expectation is Sauce will be the best corner in the NFL for many, many years. F4, one of the best playmakers in the NFL, hands down. This is where I have Travis Kelsey. Every single playoff game this year, this dude had a touchdown. Even when dudes are doubting him, you know, after 30 years old, he's still out here performing. He had a game with four touchdowns. He had a game with three touchdowns. Seven touchdowns in two games. That's a crazy number. 110 receptions. Just over 1,300 receiving yards. He had 152 targets. 12 touchdowns. 78 first downs as Patrick Mahomes security blanket. 648 yards after the catch. In four games this year. Only four games this year with less than six receptions. So we're talking about six six plus catches, 13 games out of the season. And we talked about, you know, the touchdown production. Travis Kelsey is an all-time tight end. Could You could argue the best. I know there's Gronk and Tony Gonzalez in that conversation with a couple of others. But Travis Kelsey deserves his flowers, deserves his love. Two-time Super Bowl champion, Travis Kelsey at the tight end position, coming in at number four. On my top 25. At three, I hope you guys don't find this disrespectful. I just think that the previous years that he's had, he's really set a different standard for himself and where he's supposed to be any single given year. And, you know, with the lack of weapons that he really had, people would say, oh my God, he should be one. He was the MVP this year. So let's show some credit. Let's show some love to Patrick Mahomes here. Patrick Mahomes' rushing ability, you know, really won them the Super Bowl. I feel like that was, you know, the difference in the second half. And really in the game, the Eagles played a good game. He had 10 games this year with over 300 passing yards. In Week 7 and 8 alone, he had 869 passing yards just in those two games. Absolutely crazy. On the season, he had 5,250 passing yards, 41 touchdowns, just averaging over 300 yards per game. 12 games this year, Patrick Mahomes had over two touchdowns, so two plus touchdowns, and we can't forget to mention he had three, four plus touchdown games. Patrick Mahomes is a man amongst boys. This dude is the best quarterback in the NFL. I just think when we're comparing seasons and we look at this on his standard and what he's really played the past couple of seasons, I had one quarterback above him. I'm sure I'll receive some hate for that, but you guys can let me know. At two, this is where I have the best wide receiver in the NFL. This is the spot for Justin Jefferson. In the past three seasons, this dude is 175 yards shy of 5,000 receiving yards. That's a crazy number. Let's show some respect to Justin Jefferson and the impact that he's had you know, in the NFL since he was drafted out of LSU. He's had at least seven touchdowns and 1,400 receiving yards in every single season that he's had. 128 receptions on the year, just over 1,800 receiving yards. He had eight touchdowns this year, and he had 11 games over 100 yards. Absolutely crazy impact, and the Vikings are one of the best teams in the NFC this year. They fell just short of expectations, you know, couldn't get past the New York football giants, but it's all good. 
showing some love, showing some gritty love to Justin Jefferson here at two on my top 25. And at one, if you want my opinion, this dude, if he played another two games this year, he would have been your MVP. This is where I have Jalen Hurts. He had four games with 300-plus passing yards. Seven of his 14 games, he had three-plus total touchdowns. So we're talking about production in the air and on the ground. Absolutely tremendous from Jalen Hurts. He had 3,700 passing yards, 22 passing touchdowns, 13 rushing touchdowns. So let's keep that in mind with this type of style of play from the quarterback position. 760 rushing yards, and he had eight games with 10-plus rushing attempts. So really showing that versatility and the ability to, you know, really have an impact in both the passing game and the rushing game. Absolutely crazy year for Jalen Hurts. And as a Giants fan, I'm a little worried to see that he's going to be, you know, the quarterback of the future for the Philly Eagles. Running through the top 10 again, we have Trent Williams at 10, Devontae Adams at 9, Christian McCaffrey at 8, Nick Bosa at 7, Tyreek Hill at 6, Sauce Gardner here at 5, Travis Kelsey at 4, Pat Mahomes at 3, Justin Jefferson at 2, and at 1, this is where we have Jalen Hurts. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the top 10. Make sure you stay tuned to all the other content we have coming out with Since the Sandbox. We have our sophomore slumps of success, our free agency impressions, and next week, to start off the week, we have our episode with president and co-founder of DraftKings, Matt Kawish. Guys, make sure to stay tuned to the sophomore slump of success episode next week. Show love on social media. You guys know the deal. Peace, love, and five stars. Nothing less.